Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about my health journey and the roller coaster that is my emotions. Today we're feeling pretty good. We did a little festive nail pattern and the makeup is looking the same as last week, but I'm feeling a lot more positively about myself this week. So we are going with it. We are riding that high. I have needed to make a little pep talk to myself. So this video is really just mainly for myself. 2023 has been a rough year. I don't think I have had as much chronic pain as I have had in 2023. Every single day I have debilitating pain in one way or another, but 2023 has just been the worst. It started in January with a UTI that traveled to my kidneys, and then February I got an IUD and my endometriosis caused hell for me for a month in adjusting to that IUD. And then this month, the month of March, has been a lot of unexpected dental work and expenses that have completely drained my bank account. So we're hoping that this year turns around. My health journey has felt like a rough start in this like reboot <laughs> this weight loss journey 2.0. I need to do some course corrections. I need to have a little bit of a mindset adjustment in order for me to actually have a sustainable and enjoyable health journey. So these are just some things that I need to really get ingrained in my head that I need to stop having this mindset and I need to start thinking about this instead. So that's why I'm recording this. The first thing that I need to stop doing is I need to stop binging junk food just to get it out of my house and stop like finishing a whole chunk of whatever I'm eating even if it's like too much for me in one sitting stop eating that just so that the next day I won't have it and I won't have to eat it again the next day and feel bad again the next day when the whole point of actual like sustainable eating is to be able to eat things in moderation. Yesterday we had a pizza and I had half of this pizza on my side with like my toppings that I like. And I could have eaten all four slices of the pizza. For me, with my history of binging, I, I could have thrown that down and a pint of ice cream. But the fact was that I was really considering like I could eat all four slices of these pizza of this pizza so that tomorrow I don't have the leftover slice because I really only need like three slices for a meal that's that's me personally I'm not at the two slice I'm not part of the one slice gang I am <laughs> three slices of pizza to satiety so I was thinking I could have the three slices and feel good and just have a meal and have one leftover slice and just have that for tomorrow. Or in order to not have that be a mental battle for tomorrow, I could eat all four slices in one sitting and just feel bad once. When if I just ate the three slices and saved the other for, for tomorrow, I wouldn't feel bad at any point. Because why feel bad about eating something to satiety but not overeating it? That was something that I started yesterday. I had some leftover pizza. I saved the leftovers. Actually, I've been doing that for the last couple of days. I've been eating something, realizing, hmm, I'm actually getting full. I need to just put away whatever I have left and just have it left over and enjoy it again the next day. I mean, they say that after the first like couple of bites of a food, you kind of like the enjoyment decreases and that's exactly right. So I need to actually maximize my enjoyment of junk food by eating an amount that would satiate me without actually then turning it into a negative experience where I hate myself after I eat that. I could just eat enough where I like myself and I like the food that I'm eating and then save the rest of that food until the next time that I can like the food that I'm eating and like myself. I, it seems so simple, but for me, it's like an all or nothing thing where if there is a scrap of junk food in the house, then I'm not on a weight loss journey. The only time I can be on a weight loss journey is if all of the food in the house is 100% clean and I am actively losing weight. I can't possibly be taking care of myself if there is a slice of pizza in the refrigerator. Make it make sense. And along with that, making food the enemy is never a good thing. I We walked into a grocery store and it was kind of later at night. I had just finished getting a filling or a root canal it was a whole thing. And we went into this grocery store and the numbness was kind of fading away from the anesthesia. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but we walked into this grocery store and literally every 
point I turned, it just felt like I was in unsafe territory the entire time I was in that grocery store because I wanted to eat food. I was hungry. But being in the grocery store when you're hungry, it's like every food then suddenly becomes the enemy because I just wanted to binge on everything simply because I was hungry. So I ended up making some good choices. Like I had some like Chobani dessert yogurts and some figs and then a low calorie ice cream pint. I normally actually going off of like my previous theory about the pizza, I should have just gotten the Ben and Jerry's and just eaten what I wanted from the Ben and Jerry's, but knowing how hungry I was, I was gonna eat that whole pint. So I got the lower calorie one just so that I would like not hate myself afterwards. But why is it that eating food makes me hate myself? Why is food the enemy? Food is for survival. Food is my friend. And speaking about survival things, the next thing that I really need to stop doing is ignoring my hunger and fullness signals. Being a long-term dieter, it's very easy for me to just turn off the switch from my brain to my body of listening to any signals of my body. Because being a long-term dieter, you turn off the part of your brain that thinks, I need to listen to my body's signals and I'm hungry, so I need to eat. If you're long-term dieting, that whole instinct of I need to eat because I'm hungry is ignored completely. But then we expect that part of our brain of listening to our body to kick in when we're finally full. That's not how it works. You're either connect for me, I'm either connected with my body and brain relationship or I am not. Having been through some like traumatic experiences, I completely understand what it's like to completely dissociate your brain from your body and just not pay attention to what is happening to your body in that moment. Unfortunately, the body keeps the score in that my body has been frozen in this state of not listening to my body signal at all. So whether I'm dieting and I feel hungry and I just need to ignore that signal to I'm full and I just keep eating because I'm ignoring that body signal. I really need to start listening to my body and make that brain body connection functional again. I don't know how that's gonna happen, but that's something that I really need to address actively, not just stop eating, stop eating so many calories. Like it's not just about weight loss. At this point, it's about actually being able to function as a whole system, including brain and body connection. It does not just work that you don't have to address anything in your brain and you just can focus on your body. That's not how it works. It's just not how it works. The next thing that I need to stop doing is I need to stop letting a number, AKA the number on the scale, ruin my day. We talked a lot about this last week, so I'm only gonna touch on it. That number on the scale is an indicator for sure. It's an indicator of health, but it is not the verdict of health especially this week, I'm on my period now. And so the numbers on the scale leading up to this week have been so discouraging. I mean, and that adds to PMS symptoms because you're already, your body is already just thrown off. And then you're looking at a number on the scale and thinking that that's a reflection of the work that you're doing. And that just really sucks. So I need to stop looking at the number on the scale and feeling that that's the verdict on my health. It's not, it's a good indicator of what's going on in my body, but I need to just take that into account and not let it ruin my day. The next thing that I need to do is I need to stop avoiding sleep. This kind of goes along with the whole ignoring your body signals. I have struggled with really bad nightmares and sleep has not always been a very safe thing for me. I've been sleep avoidant for as long as I can remember. Honestly, it's it's at least been 10 years of me just avoiding sleep. Something that people don't really talk about when talking about like, oh, you need to get sleep in order for your body to, you know, lose weight and recover and your brain to recover is that there are some people such as myself who sleep has not always been a positive or safe thing. So, what I need to do in course correcting that is I need to make sleep a safe and rewarding thing rather than something to be avoided or something to be afraid of. Again, this is like more mental health stuff that people don't really address in a, in a weight loss space. But for me, 
specifically. I can't just tell myself I need to go to bed earlier. I need to actually make sleep feel safe and rewarding. My partner and I have like started praying before going to sleep and depending on what you know spirituality or if you're religious or anything like some of that could potentially be incorporated in order to make your sleep feel a little bit more protected or a little bit more safe but for me it has honestly really helped to each their own with that but for me I I need to stop avoiding sleep which means that I need to really address the things that I've been avoiding the next thing that I need to stop doing is I need to stop injuring myself from exercising. Like, girl, you really think you're going to be like a weightlifting athlete, like right off the couch? What the <laughs> you need to stop. Slow it down. Ease up, girl. I need to like give myself time to rest and recover. And for God's sakes, I just need to take it easy with physical activity especially if i'm a beginner it's again one of those like brain body connection things like i'm over here thinking i'm like a 16 year old gymnast <laughs> and my body's like you're 27 and you're thick girl <laughs> stop it <laughs> all of this is fat right now you don't have that much muscle to rely on so just chill take it easy god and the last thing that I really need to course correct on is I need to stop negative self-talk. My partner has noticed this throughout our relationship, honestly, and notes to me quite frequently that I am really mean to myself and that I'm my worst critic. And honestly, it's like the things that we speak over ourselves, the things that we speak over our lives, I think we really do manifest. And I have been manifesting some really negative shit I need to be nice to myself. I think ultimately this video is basically like if you wouldn't say or do something to your best friend, you shouldn't say or do that thing to yourself. If your best friend was hungry and you're just like, you could starve, bitch, like that you wouldn't say that to your best friend. You wouldn't do that to your best friend. So why would why are you doing that to yourself? I mean, the things that I say about myself, I would never say to anybody. That would be so rude. That would actually, that would be relationship ending. And yet I find that to be acceptable to say to myself, make it make sense. It doesn't. So you can't. So those are some things that I am just really needing to address. I need to really reflect on those things. My partner and I have gotten really interested in the show My 600 Pound Life. And something that I have observed in almost every single one of the episodes in which they actually achieve weight loss and succeed in working toward their goal. Each of those patients have a moment. A moment where not only does it just click and they start making progress, but they start believing in themselves. All of a sudden, the episode just shifts. The energy of the episode shifts, and they're feeling more positive, and they're going for walks, eating what they are supposed to be eating, and they're following the diet, and there's just this click. It's like the first half of the episode, everything is pain, everything is failure, everything is struggle, and then something clicks, they find some sort of hope to hold on to, they find some sort of motivation or some activity that they enjoy, and they start seeing the good in themselves. They start seeing the positive qualities and the potential in themselves and the capability of themselves. And suddenly things start actually moving in the right direction. And I think it is that positive momentum, and it could just be one thing to spark that momentum, but that momentum builds, and then you start seeing this person just flourish and bloom in front of you on the screen. And while I'm not 600 pounds, I definitely feel like 2023 and this reboot of my health journey, you know, weight loss 2.0 kind of thing, has just felt like one of those episodes where it's just like, ugh. I can't, I'm frustrated and what is going on? What am I even doing? Why do I even wanna do this? And I'm just in pain all the time. And I'm hoping that with these course corrections, something will spark, some sort of hope or some sort of positive momentum will spark the snowball of effects in which I'm actually just feeling like myself again. It's not even really toward the weight loss and I'm. I don't even know if I have like a specific why as to why I want to lose weight. I just know that there's something missing in the way that I feel 
like myself like I don't really feel like myself right now and the only time that I have felt like myself is when I've been actively losing weight and I have been feeling good and capable in myself so it might not even be the weight loss in and of itself that I need to aim for I may just really be pursuing a feeling of capability and positivity in myself and that's what I'm going to strive for with these course corrections so I'll check back in with you next week to see how any of this goes. I'm sorry if my voice feels a little, a little scratchy, but you know, we're getting through it. We're doing it. Okay, girly. I love you so much. If you haven't subscribed or liked the video, you could consider it. It's a possibility for you. It's a possibility for us together as a team. But anyway. Hopefully, I'll just see you next week, okay? Bye!